Hi folks, welcome here to my YouTube channel. Um, this is ICAD number seven for me, and this one, like number one, has been inspired by the mood board at Our Mixed Media Moods. The top middle picture really was speaking to me. It had this gorgeous flower on it. So uh, let's get started. I'll show you how I created this beautiful little ICAD. Um, so this index card is three inches by five inches, and I've already prepped all of them, so this just has a layer of gesso on it. This piece of under paper right here that I'm using is actually the one that I prepped all the I, all the index cards on. So it has a ton of gesso with this tiny bit of um, navy from Dina Wakely. She calls it night. It's such a really beautiful color. So I was really inspired by the by the, the under paper itself. So I clipped out a piece that I was really in love with and I glued it directly to the top of my index card using Yoohoo. So the reason that I'm using Yoohoo and I'm not using a gel medium is because I wanted the areas of the under paper that were showing through um, as paper to stay super absorbent. Because now I have like scribbled around the edge with a Stabilo Marksol and when I activate that with water then the paper really picks up the pigment and the paint that's on there kind of resists it a little bit. So I get this really 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 interesting sort of grungy cool technique going on it's really really awesome and um, I love it so when you're putting your paper down keep that in mind sometimes you want to collage the top and the bottom with like a gel medium and sometimes you don't so I dried that once that was all down and did the stabilo and let that go um, and then I have hmm, trying to see oh yeah okay so then I put in some night that beautiful kind of like Payne's gray navy colored paint that Dina Wakely has I put that into the bottom of my cup and a tiny bit of water and I am now sketching into place a flower um, in the same kind of shape that's happening on that mood board so and I'm also using a pinstriping brush or something that's similar would be like a fine line brush or a nail brush, just something with a really, 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 really small thin bristles. And the reason is because it's almost impossible to overload your brush with paint because they're just not big enough to hold a lot of paint. So I'm getting this very cool, like almost dry brushed effect and you can kind of see the paint's very dark where I first put the brush down. And then very quickly as I pull the brush um, against the paper, then that paint starts to dissipate. So it's really cool. Now I am using that same brush, but I am using some gesso to sort of add in some kind of cool little white dots and give some value to my flower. Because even though I had those different tones in the navy or night, it's, the paint color is actually called night, um, even though I had those different tones going on in there, it still needed a little bit of, of highlighting for me. Now I'm pulling out two colors of DMC floss. This is uh, like an embroidery floss and it's really popular and it comes in an insane amount of colors. Um, I'll have the specific colors for you listed in the supply list below. After I had everything dry, I kind of decided I wanted it to be that much grungier around the edges because I had all this beautiful white gesso showing towards the center of the card and I wanted to give it more depth. The whole the whole card in general, I wanted to have more depth. So by running that stabilo around the edge again and then activating it with water, I got this kind of like cool, luxurious frame. So it's really nice and it's fun. And you know, a little bit goes a long way when it comes to a stabilo. So you kind of do it, do it gently and in stages because you can always go darker, but it's really hard to go lighter. Especially with a water soluble product like a Stabilo Marzal, because if you put wet paint on that Stabilo, then that paint is going to actually come up and it's going to mix, or I mean, that Stabilo is going to come up and it's going to mix into the paint, and then that paint's going to be kind of grungy. Now I'm going to do some embroidery um, stitches. So I love this hand stitching onto my piece. And this is the most hand stitching I've ever done on one piece. And I love it. I'm totally in love with the whole piece. It just makes me so stinking happy. I'm going to do two stitches. I'm going to do a little cross stitch, which is just an X where you cross it over. And then I'm going to do a French knot. So it gets really quick here. 
because it takes me quite a while to put in all these different stitches. And I start with the navy colored thread. And like I said, those specific names and numbers will be below in the supply list, either on my blog or um, in, the, in the description of the video. So when it comes to the French knot, it's fairly, fairly easy to accomplish once you just practice with it. So I come up from underneath and I, using my left hand, I, I pull the thread all the way through the hole first, so the needle. So there's no thread hanging below. It's not loose, it's nice and taut. Then I pull the thread with my left hand to the left while I still have the needle in my right hand. And using the needle in my right hand, I come towards my body and go underneath the thread very close to the hole. And I wrap it around the needle a couple times like that. And keeping the thread really tight, it's important you keep it tight because if you let the thread go loose, then the thread gets all over and it's not going to bunch up like a French knot should. And now some people use French knots to make like flowers and pretty things in their embroidery. So I wrap it and like I said, I came towards my body and I go underneath the thread and then back over, underneath, over, underneath, over. Two, three, four times. It depends on how big you want the knot and exactly what kind of a material you're working on. And then I put my needle fairly close to the hole that I came up under but far enough away that it's not going to rip because I'm I'm using paper here and it is two layers of paper I should mention the, um it's a two layer um, it is two layers of paper because there's the index card and then there's gesso and then there's the um under paper so keep that in mind too I have two layers of paper here which makes it that much stronger so after I have the thread wrapped around the needle, then I go a little bit, like just a couple centimeters, like a couple millimeters, not a whole lot, but enough where the, like I mentioned, the paper isn't going to tear. And I push the needle back through the paper going nice and slowly. And then I feed the needle all the way through the whole time, keeping the thread really taut with my left hand. Okay. And then I come all the way through. And as that, as that thread starts to pull really, really tight where my finger is, I can let go and it's created like this really cool little knot on top of itself. And it's so wonderful. And once you kind of practice doing it, then it's really awesome and it turns out beautifully. Um, I did switch from a navy thread to sort of like this steely gray or steely blue kind of teal color. And it's so beautiful and it goes really well with the navy as sort of like a lighter kind of like little petal on this flower. Um, in addition to the supplies below, um, I will link to my blog post. Also, my Facebook groups. I have a couple of Facebook groups, one for Art Mixed Media Moods and one for specifically just Art Journaling and Mixed Media with me, where I share a bunch of other videos and tips and tricks and artwork from other people and people who take my classes. It's really cool, so join us there. Um, and then I, the reason I brought this up, things I'm going to be listing, is because I'm also going to list... Uh, the link to a video that is really good on showing you how to do French knots. Okay, so that's it guys. Um, oh, I did get out my white, my Sharpie paint marker, my white one. It, this is a water-based marker and I used it to add some dimension and detail to my project. So I'll pop those um, detailed photos here at the end again. Thank you so much for joining me. ICAD has been really fun so far. I'm really glad to have you here. I love RMX Media Moods. Feel free to subscribe because I have a bunch more videos coming up and I'll see you around.